Good morning for our team there. Super Falcon is doing so well by being able to defeat uh, Cameroon in that encounter. One nail the peep them extra Okoronko scoring that particular goal. Welcome you on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV. Um, Adini G Shafer. Well, we run through the world of sport. At least kudos to our ladies uh, trying to take their own revenge in this particular encounter. They are talking about this particular match. It was a tension soaked match because the two teams they play goalless in the first leg in Douala, Cameroon just four days ago. And by the time they came uh, came for the second one, a tough one that actually happened. They are talking about uh, Super Falcons versus uh, the Lionesses of uh, Cameroon, where right now be playing against uh, against uh, South Africa in the next game that will be coming up. Well, looking at that particular story, Olympic qualifiers, third round, Super Falcons uh, uh, peep Lionesses through to final round. That final round they'll be facing. South Africa in that particular encounter. A good one for our ladies. They were able to do it. And uh, we are so, so grateful for the fact that uh, they won that particular encounter. One goal scored, extra Okoronko doing it in the uh, 15th uh, minute. All right now, it goes or rather Falcons are qualified for the next, uh, the last round of the Olympics. They want to be at the Olympics. And uh, really, the ladies did so well in that particular game. Well, that, that was a particular occurrence where <laughs> the players of Cameroon actually, uh, they were trying to accuse our goalkeeper. That has to do with uh, uh, the issue of uh, voodoo. Well, let's just look at that particular snippet there concerning that particular game. What's a match there? Tension so like I said. Cameroonians really want to go to the Olympics. Well, very painful looking at what happened at AFCON. And now this is the Olympics. Well, a lot of Nigerians are saying we wait to see that fight between Ngano and Anthony Joshua turning to be Nigerian Cameroon rivalry. For Super Falcons, Olympics is really knocking at the door. 180 minutes for them. Let's see what happened both first leg and second leg of that game against current champion of Africa in women's football. That is South Africa against uh, Super Falcons of Nigeria. That will be coming up in April 2024. Hopefully, they will get this and go to the Olympics. It's been a while. We've seen them at the Olympics right now. Congrats to our team qualifying for the final round of the Olympic ticket that they are gunning for. Wishing them the best there. Talking about the Olympics and also we'll be looking at that particular competition coming up in Paris this year and we have uh, uh, we are opportunity to have the Population Officer of NOC, Nigeria Olympic Committee, joining us live on the show. Good to have you uh, Tony Nezaya. Thank you very much, my brother. Mm. Okay, good one. Yeah. At least, uh, uh, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you actually look Olympia now. <laughs> oh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm already dreaming it. I'm already looking at it. And, okay. I, and I know that it is very visible. Okay. And uh, our teams are doing very well. We were so particularly happy that the, the, the ladies inched their way uh, towards the Olympics, and I believe that they will they will get the nod by the time they, they face South Africa. We are okay, looking forward one. to it, and we believe that we'll do it. Okay, yeah. uh, from the way it is right now, uh, well, I'm sure you are <laughs> you are about ready for the Olympics. But right now, uh, let we talk about the Olympics. Let's focus on the Olympics and also the African Games. That's going to be our focus. Team Nigerian preparation uh, ahead of Olympics and also African Games. We know that uh, the NOC, they're in charge of all these happening so that we can get a better team ahead of the Olympics coming up in Paris. Uh, first of all, take us through the preparation so far for Team Nigeria. Yeah, <clears throat> at the moment, all the teams that are going to the Games, they are all in camp uh, at various locations around the country. Uh, some are in Abuja, while in the, the bulk of them are in Lagos, and everybody working towards the same objective, to go and get the gold medal. Uh, in virtually every, every other sport, we have, uh, we have played the second fiddle in, in long enough that we now want to win at, at, the, Olymp at, the, uh, at the African Games. And um, uh, uh, from what we have gathered, 
the, you know, the Ghanaians have provided very good venues uh, for this uh, event. And then, of course, you know, our people are battle-tested. Many of them are still uh, 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 gearing up from there, uh, you know, uh, to, to go and, uh, and do what they know how to do best. Uh, we have a number of our teams. We have um, uh, a number of our teams, you know, preparing, uh, giving last the last moment up to their preparations, you know, to go to Ghana and make an impression, and uh, the impression they must make. Okay, well, good one. At least uh, we want to see them making impression. Now, when it comes to these Olympics that we Nigerians are beginning to get, at least we are we are beginning to see some athletes getting qualified for all the events so far. Can you take us through what are the events uh, that uh, we are expecting Nigeria to compete up like 25 or 22 or 20? And then uh, an overview of how many players, or rather athletes so far that we've seen that have qualified for the Olympics? We have, we have a number of them who have uh, qualified for the, the Games. Of course, you know that uh, Oduayo uh, Adekuroye, a uh, wrestler, is uh, qualified. In fact, actually, she's the first female to to the first Nigerian to have qualified for the Games. Then you have uh, Elizabeth Ayana Cho, Ayana Cho competes in the Taekwondo. Uh, at the last All Africa Games, she, was, uh, she had a, a medal, uh, I think it was a bronze medal that she came home with. Well, now a bit more matured and uh, ready to go. Then we, we have uh, the national basketball team, uh, the uh the, the tigress you know they are qualified for the games mm -hmm. then you have uh, some in athletics you have Osoro, Osoro for long long jump and then you have uh, lovina uh, a cyclist you know for the first time a lady is uh, qualifying for the games mm -hmm. you know and then of course you have this uh, this uh, national female female team the uh, the, the, Fal the falcons you know, you know that are also uh, just have only one hurdle to, to cross and then they are, they are through to the games. Because uh, there are so many other individuals who are still uh, uh, trying to uh, find their way. In boxing, we have about three persons, uh, one, one of which is a lady and two, two others are men. They are all uh, qualified for the games. And then, uh, of course, you still have uh, a, lot, a lot more to qualify from the weightlifting. They still have an event. And uh, the, of course, part of the event is the African Games in Ghana. Uh, and then, of course, they have another championship in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, when they are, by the time you aggregate all that, you know, would have determined the number of people who are, are so qualified to don the national colors there. You know? So that is, uh, as, as it, you know, they are, they are still coming. You know? We have not aggregated all of them uh, are to, are together. But we believe that they will make very, very strong impressions, and uh, we are keeping them, uh, you know, everything wrapped. But for now, okay, good one there. But Join you us. know, we have the we have the African Games to deal with. Uh, that is the immediate one to prosecute. Uh, out of which we have uh, eight events that are Olympic qualifier, and uh, we are making sure that we use every little opportunity that we can we have to ensure that these ones make it to the games. Of course, you know, athletics is a very strong one. Uh, you already are, they are making impressions in the, at the indoor. Uh, for now, be very soon the outdoors will, will open and uh, those who, who are, are itching to make it to the games will manifest themselves, you know. Okay, good one. We're talking with the Public Relations Officer of Nigeria Olympic Committee, Tony Neziaya, joining us from Lagos there. Right now, talking about the African Games. Uh, it's just very close right now. In a couple of days, like by March 8th, it should be starting. Uh, what are the expectations of uh, concerning this? Because Team Nigeria seems to, they really want to at least do us proud in this competition. So far, let's talk about that particular African Games now, in preparation. Uh, let me take, take, for instance, you know, the, the handball team, mm. the handball team is, uh, is in Lagos, you know, already training. And, you know, they have just returned from Egypt where they, they won the President's Cup. And you, for that kind of team, they are ready to go. Yeah, and they have a very solid uh, uh, leadership in uh, as far as the coaching is concerned. They have uh, Rafi Salami, one time the best 
player to have come out of Nigeria and uh, currently, you know, currently working with a team in Paris. But right now, he's in Lagos with a team. Mm -hmm. And he has told them that there is only one target. And that target is the goal. You know, uh, what some of them were not able to do for Nigeria, he believes that they can do it uh, because they have been dreaming about it. And uh, he says they must go and get that only, uh, you know. Then you also have a team uh, like uh, the tri triathlon. The last time they were at the African Games was in Maputo, uh, uh, you know, uh, in 19, uh, uh, you know, 2011. And uh, this time around, they have been given a very rare opportunity to showcase their talent. And they are right now in camp in Lagos, you know, uh, doing everything that they, they can to ensure that they uh, that they win a, a medal, make very strong impressions because they do believe that anybody is better than them, and uh, uh, they they want to be there uh, to showcase that their talent. We have a number of those other teams, you know, that are also training. They are all training in Lagos, uh, raring to go. Um, um, I believe that they they have all it takes. You know, you have. Um, the weightlifting, the weightlifting teams, you have the Kenyan teams, you have the boxing, the badminton, and um, of course the Taekwondo is in Abuja, and uh, wrestling, they all, all of them are, are raring to go. They, they want uh, uh, they, you know, to lift Nigeria, if it means uh, lift these financial problems, these problems that we have now, you know, if uh, they can use sports to alleviate the problem. They are sure going to do that because nobody is happy with whatever is the situation in the country. They want to show that Nigeria is not not down and not out. You know, we are still there, very strong, and uh, you know, of course, represented by the the, the eagle. You know, uh, that's the symbol of Nigeria. It the symbol of strength, raw strength. And uh, always, always they are aiming at the, at the height. Yeah. Okay, good one there. Tony Denzaya there. Now, let's uh, look at uh, the coverage of this event. You know, you are the PRO, uh, the, a lot of uh, uh, press men out there. Uh, a lot of things that needs to be known concerning this because I remember the last time we spoke and you said, okay, there's some clarification that needs to be done. A lot of people don't really understand that has to do with accreditation, covering such events. Just take us through briefly. Well, you know, we started the accreditation process because uh, we felt that the Ghana was a bit uh, slow in uh, in uh, dealing with the accreditation process. You know, so we started out uh, trying to do whatever we can, you know, to ensure that uh, uh, an appreciable number of Nigerian media are represented. That is, uh, you know, but somehow, uh, somehow. Ghana took over the entire thing, they distributed, they started distributing links uh, to various individuals, you know, media individuals, you know, to, to apply. Of course, that, that meant that uh, whatever we were doing, we had to slow down with it uh, because uh, the organizers have taken over. Mm -hmm. And uh, for good, maybe for good reason or for whatever reason, they are taking over. And so that, that is how we, we stopped our own uh, process of uh, gathering the media. But we will try to verify and to see that they have done a, a fair thing by giving their access to everybody. And they, they have applied. And then you know, just a, a handful are the ones that are complaining now that they, they, they have not able, been able to get messages back from Ghana. They have their own teaching problems. We don't know what they are, what the problems are. But we believe that at the end of the day, on arrival in Accra, all the people who applied uh, to cover the games will get the accreditation. That's 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 our strong belief because it, it is, this is not the first time that uh, such a, a situation will play out. It, it played out in virtually all the previous games 
that I, the Olympic, um, uh, the African Games that uh, I attended, at least I was uh, part of the fourth African Games uh, in, in Accra, you know, in, um, in Kenya, uh, in, in, in 1987. Uh, uh, I was also part of uh, the African Games in, in, in the at the African, at the, in South Africa, that's 1999. I was also part of our own that we hosted in Abuja. I was uh, part of the one that, that was hosted in Algeria in 2007. It, it has always been resolved, and uh, one way or the other, maybe at home, at the home of uh, the, the host uh, country. You know, so it has not been anything too different. You know, of course, the, the, the that of uh, Paris, uh, the, you know, normally the Olympics, you know, one year ahead, they have started the accreditation process and they conclude it, you know, uh, in good time. And you get your tax, you know, because usually the tax uh, are the visas. But, you know, at the African level, there are literally two problems that we have not been able to overcome. And that is why, why this one is also playing out this way. So I believe in Ghana, we will be able to solve out uh, on and on ground. We will be able to solve some of the little, little problems. Okay, we want there. Well, so, before, as far as that, as far as that, but the, that of officials, of course, is, you know, normally we don't have uh, as, as much problems because countries uh, are represented, you know, they, they ensure that the team's coming or, you know, or, or we properly accredited and uh, uh, provided all that, all that is needed. Mm. Okay, yes. thank you so much. We want to appreciate your time with us, uh, giving us all, all those updates concerning the Olympics and also African Games preparation for Team Nigeria. Thank you so much, Tony Neziah from Lagos, Public Relations Officer of Nigeria Olympic Committee. We are grateful. My brother, thank you very much, you know, and for giving us the opportunity to explain ourselves. Uh, we are at the back and call any time, any day, 24-7, uh, to respond to problems and all that, you know, that uh, in my manifest. Thank because you we can't much. assure you that there will be 100% but an appreciable uh, work and we have to go in to ensure that we have little or no problems at the end of the day. What we want are the medals. Thank you very much. Yeah, good morning there. We just had a, a, a big time with uh, uh, Tony Neziah, the Public Relations Officer of Nigeria Olympic Committee, taking us through the plans of uh, NOC and also how, how many uh, athletes have qualified so far. Taking us through all those updates, at least we need to know what's happening concerning that. And for creation for journalists, they are also working on how to see that journalists are able to cover that event. Well, the African game will be starting by March 8th in Ghana, while Paris Olympia also is actually knocking at the door, although that will be later. But right now we just have to come back to the studio to talk about activities that happened during the at like least uh, yesterday and also uh the one for today but right now we talk about the mpfl youth league uh, being at least we have been played in uh in benin city they call the playoff mpfl youth league uh initiative receives plaudit uh, from former international Unduka Uba, they also play in this tournament. Uh, right now, a coach he was there to at least uh, encourage the young ones who are playing this league. Yesterday, Plateau United on the youth uh, team that they actually play goalless against Rivers United. Katsina United pipped Rangers by a long goal in these games that were played yesterday. Well, just to let you know that uh, in Benin City, the MPFL Youth League, where young, talented footballers are right now being watched across a lot of uh, scouts out there are trying to see how these young Nigeria's talents will not waste away. Good one for the M NFF for at least uh, sanctioning this to see the light of the day. We have talented uh, players in Benin City right now. Plateau United, Remo Stars, Katsina, Rangers. These are young players, under 17 players, who are right now showcasing their talent in Benin City. They will continue for concerning that particular competition on Wednesday. Today is the arresting day. And right now, we move away from there. Let's talk about uh, NBA. For those who love basketball, games were played earlier today over there in the NBA. And we look at the result of four matches or four games that were played. Toronto Raptors, actually, they fought hard, but they lost against Indiana Pacers in that game where Barnes actually scored 21 points uh, for Toronto. He uh, also did well for uh, having 12 rebounds and 12 assists. Indiana Pacers maturing, getting 34 points. Point and nine rebound 
for Indiana Pacers. Detroit Pistons, 111, two points behind against New York Knicks, who actually nipping the ball by extra two uh, points there. John Hart was a hero for that game for Knicks uh, in that particular encounter. Cunningham scored tied two points for Detroit Pistons with eight assists, and Bronson actually did well by scoring 35 points and 12 assists in that particular game there. For Nets, Brooklyn Nets, 111, they won against Memphis Grizzlies, who scored 86 points in that uh, game there. Big one for Lonnie Walker. Walker was the, uh, actually did the basket against uh, uh, Memphis Grizzlies. You have Finney Smith for Brooklyn, 13 points, 9 rebounds. Stevens uh, also scored uh, 17 points and 6 rebounds for Memphis Grizzlies. For Miami Heat, it ended in favor of the Heat, 121 against Sacramento Kings, who scored 110, where Caleb Martins emphatic uh, uh, slam put them ahead. You look at Adebayo, the one they call Valma Adebayo, was able to score 28 points uh, for Miami Heat, 10 rebounds and 7 assists, while Murray actually did well for Sacramento Kings with 28 points and three steals there in those uh, games just played earlier today in the NBA. Just to give you updates concerning that, and while we talk about the NBA, we'll quickly look at the result of matches played yesterday. The one we call Monday result. Let's look at the result quickly. West Ham did well. They defeated Brentford 4-2. Girona 3 against Rio Vallecano. They won that game convincingly. Roma 3-2. Five goal thriller against Torino in the city of Rome. And you have uh, Fiorentina. 2-1 against Lazio. Coyote uh, scoring one of the goals there for Fiorentina. You can't take anything away from Roma, where the Bala was on song yesterday, getting a hat trick for his team, AS Roma. If you look at how the table is, after that, those games were played, let's look at uh, Premier League, where West Ham right now standing 8 on the low, that's 9 points from 26 games, with a minus 6 goal difference. And you look at uh, the uh, bottom part of the table, the team they play against, Brentford, standing 16 there for uh, Everton. Well, that story came out that uh, their 10 point deduction had been reduced to 6. So right now they are standing 15 on the log with uh, uh, 25 points from 26 matches there. Talking about the Premier League table as it went down uh, after the match between West Ham and Brentford took place. Now La Liga, uh, Girona, they were able to win their game. Looking at La Liga table there, you look at the fact that Girona are really uh, breathing down the neck of uh, Real Madrid. 59 points they have after playing that game. They won and now they have 59 points behind the Real Madrid. You actually have 65. Extra six points they are looking for to meet up Barcelona, Atletico Madrid in that pecking in order. Bottom of the table, you look at how it is. Osasuna, Deportivo, Alaves, uh, La Coruña rather. And you have uh, uh, Villarreal, Rayo Vallecano, all lined up in that pecking order. Granada, Almeria, still walloping at the bottom of the table with 14 points and also 9 there. Straight down to Italian as they are, we are AS Roma. They were able to win their game. They won their game. Talking about uh, uh, them, uh, that's their star player. Talking about uh, Dybala getting the hat trick in that game. Let's look at how the table is standing in Italia Serie A. Inter are still running away with it. Extra ahead of uh, uh, Juventus, who are 57 points. For Inter Milan, 66 points. And you can count that uh, they are really edging closer to get this Scudetto. If they can do it, 51 goal, uh, goal difference for them. For the Nerazzurris, they are really doing the business. For AC Milan, the Rosoneris are running top on the log with 53 points, followed by Bologna, Atalanta. AS Roma, that win has gotten them that particular position. 44 points, 26 games, and they have 16 as goal difference. Fiorentina, after they won their own game too, they have 41 points, followed by Lazio. Napoli, well, defending champion right now, standing ninth on the log. Well, they're trying to see how they can up their game, but right now it's getting very, very late. 37 to 66. What would they do to get it right? Well, it seems uh, the Napoli, uh, the team, uh, they are not ready to defend what they did uh, wonderfully last season. Torino are standing 10th on the log with 36 points. And you look at the bottom of the table in the Italia, as they are, you look at 11 belonging to Monza, Genoa, Empoli, Lecce, Udinese, Frosinone, Sassuolo, Verona, Cagliari, and Salanitana in that pecking order. Salanitana having 13 points from 26 matches, minus 33 
goal difference. What's the way to go? Talking about the Italian Serie A, we just brought to you there the three tables, La Liga, Italian Serie A, and also Premier League for West Ham United. Good one for them. Standing eight right now on the log. And for Everton, they're happy for the fact that out of 10 that was deducted, they reduce it by four. Now they have at least uh, six points deducted from it. They remove four from it. Well, good one for where West Ham and also for Everton jubilating there. Well, just to give you update concerning happenings in the world of sport on the show, 360 Sport. Earlier on, we had the public relations officer of the NOC, Nigerian Olympic Committee, that gave us updates concerning happenings about Team Nigerian's preparation ahead of the Olympics and also the African Games. For Super Falcons, Good one for them. The last one to cross against Bayana, that's uh, Bayana Bayana of South Africa, defending champion of Africa right now. But they have to really play their best when they are facing the Bayana Bayana because we know what's going to be what at stake against Cameroon. First leg, goalless. Second leg, one knee. Cost of Esther Okoronko, 15 minute goal that was scored at the MK Abela Stadium yesterday. Wishing them the best. And we just have to wrap it up right now. As we always say, that sport is business and fitness. I'm Adeni Yi, Thanks for watching.